we're seeing some things doing great and some things are complete failures. I've got Ryan taking down these last four cattle panel. This area stays wet after the rain and so not many beans germinated if any those last two it had like one bean per the whole foot i mean per the whole panel so he's going to take down this panel too even though it's got like six bean plants on it because we can utilize it better up in the main garden to plant the pole beans again these beans have done very well and they are continuing to produce so we're going to leave these up but we're going to replant for a late summer garden crop up in the main garden it's been a really weird growing season for us here in georgia we started out really cool our spring stayed cool longer than it ever has and then it got really hot and the rain has either been too much or not enough it's really been difficult for some of these plants so down here in this lower garden we have a lot of grass that's grown up in between it's really hard to control that but we're seeing some things doing great and some things are complete failures and I don't know why. So we didn't get as much corn as we thought we were going to get. Actually the corn didn't do great at all but there's still something to harvest from it. Um, so that's something you can learn from, from us is if you try to grow something there still could be something to harvest. This corn is uh, very tiny but it still tastes delicious. and you can eat the whole thing, including the cob. Mmm, that's good. And really, we did everything we were supposed to do. We fertilized three different times. We kept, we, we put irrigation on them to make sure that they got water even when we didn't have rain. We really have no idea why our corn doesn't do better, but it's a learning process and we're learning as we go and what we have learned the last two years of trying to grow corn down here is that maybe we should try to grow it up top in our raised beds even though they're smaller bed sizes they're extremely rich compost and we feel like maybe that's what it needs and uh, down here it's just not getting what it needs but these pole beans are doing great we've got loofah that's not loofah I'm sorry um, snake gourd snake gourd bean we got zinnias we've got the long noodle beans which I have not been successful before this is my first season being successful and they're growing wonderfully down here so I really don't know why some things are doing good and some things aren't our okra didn't even grow more than this big and that has never happened to me in the whole time I've been growing which is my entire life um, and I've been growing okra for at least 10 years probably more um, and it's it's always been the easy crop and for some reason they have stayed knee-high or smaller and not even produced a bloom and they were fertilized and watered I'm so perplexed. It's just a really weird growing season. Uh, yummy, Mom. Is it good? Mm -hmm. You can eat the whole thing. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. So our little happy accident actually turns out to be something that the kids enjoy even more than regular corn. These long beans have been excellent. The green ones put on fruit first and then the red ones started to and just now the Thai ones that are kind of striated are just now starting to put on and they look like they're a shorter bean but I don't know if that's just because it's early something we're having serious issues with this year is not tomato hornworms but tomato fruit worm and army worm are taking over it is destroying half of our crops so we're picking everything a little bit on the early side because if we don't this happens i'm inclined to cut around 
a lot of the damage, but some of it is just too bad. So we're pulling them at break. When the tomato turns white on the underside, that is break. So these are gonna ripen just fine inside the house. Which keeps them safe from getting eaten by the worms. So it's our only chance to get a good amount of tomatoes out of the garden. But we've been getting a lot. Every week I've been down here picking tomatoes. We've been eating tomato sandwiches for weeks. We've made multiple different dishes that are almost all tomato. <laughs> and I'm loving every minute of it. But despite the environmental pressures, the pest pressures, the weed pressures, the weather being wacko, we have tomatoes that are putting on new blooms. So it's not the end of the season yet, even though most of the plants look like heck. We're gonna let them continue to grow, fertilize them again, and by September, we might be seeing another tomato harvest. So I got a lot of my cherries and saladette tomatoes in here, and the big ones in there. And that's how much corn we got this round. We're gonna wait one more week for the others. And then we're gonna bush hog it. And then after we bush hog, we can go ahead and plant some fall and winter stuff down here, turnips, rutabaga, collards, whatever we feel like. And uh, it is really hot out here. Can you tell? I'm sweating just a little bit. But uh, yeah, and then we're gonna work on the garden up top, plant some more beans, maybe some cucumbers and uh, get some beds ready for our fall planting. All right, so we're attempting a different approach up here. We're gonna go more straight up and kind of like an arch, but more like a Gothic arch than a tunnel like most people do because our cattle panels were cut because tractor supply told us that we had to, but they lied to us. But that's, that's okay. We figured out ways to use it anyway. And they're gonna get another life in the garden as a new arch doorway. And it's perfect! I love it. So we're gonna put it up two right here at the entrance. <laughs> okay. I love it. I've always preferred a Gothic arch over a regular standard arch, and this looks perfect. Getting the last attachment on the bottom of that T post, and then I'm gonna take some of these bags of organic compost and pour them out just at the base. Just enough room for a few seeds for now and then eventually we'll have a bed on that side and that side but right now for this season we're just gonna have things right at the base man this watermelon is growing like crazy I gotta go around the edges every single day and tuck it back into the center so we don't end up losing our whole garden to watermelon Winter squash and melons and cucumbers for our late summer crop is doing really well. They're really dry. I thought it was going to rain last night, but barely. So I'm going to have to run irrigation, which is glad I have it. The ducks came in and ate the tops off of these. Hopefully they recover enough. And then another creature came in the garden and stole all the ground cherries and the cherry tomatoes. Little, this little creature right here. <laughs> oh, did <laughs> he loves his sand house? Your corn looks better than mine, which has led me to believe that growing the corn up here is gonna be a good way to do it next year. Might have to take an entire bed, but or two or three even. Got these okra getting eaten by pests, but I'm gonna pull out some of them and move them to give them more room and move the other ones to 
some of the beds over there where the zucchini is dying. But this year's garden is kind of weird. It's like the stuff that did well, like the basil, did really well. Peppers are doing great back there. The ground cherries are kind of dying. So we're going to probably cut those out and add some uh, something. I don't know. We've got lots of fall crops we want to plant. So it might end up being some safe for a fall planting. Odin still comes in here and eats all the ground cherries. <laughs> and our dragon tongue beans are looking a little pesty. So I don't know how much more they'll put out. But they've got tons of new growth on top. So they'll probably do another round. So no matter what, you're always going to have some failures in the garden. It's inevitable no matter how hard you try and how you follow all of the rules. Things are just going to fail. But you can take some of those failures, like these cattle panels that didn't have any beans growing on them, and turn them into successes. So we're going to get another chance at growing our pole beans at this beautiful gothic arch trellis. And I couldn't be happier. Thank you for your help, Ryan. No problem.